Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week I'm going to try something a bit different. I'm going to actually play one of my old games and I'm going to explain why as we play it. Thanks for taking this job. I know pairing socks isn't anyone's idea of a dream job, but you know, it's an honest living. So here's the procedure. Click on a sock to pick it up, then click again to drop it. Put them in the sorting machine, make sure you get a match, and the machine will pair them for you. Just make sure you make your quotas, and there we go. So this first section is basically the tutorial. A lot of games usually have a tutorial at the beginning, so we just need to find the socks that match each other. We put them into the sockets at the bottom. There we go, and that's how the game works. Heh, <laughs> the wheel of time keeps turning. Best be sure you're on top and not beneath. So this is meant to be like a smartphone, someone's talking to us. This is our first shift. This game's description is, you've got a new job pairing odd socks for a mysterious employer. And absolutely everything is fine. Nothing weird will happen. Trust me. So this is a game that I made two years ago, and I made it for the Global Game Jam 2020. So I did the coding. I was a lot worse at Scratch back then than I was now. Uh, and I learned a lot making this game. And... Uh, Basically, so the Global Game Jam, the way that it works is they give you a, a theme that you have to make a game around. And people make games in like Unity and Game Maker Studio. And we decided to make our game in Scratch because that was something that I knew how to do. I was still doing a little bit of Scratch at that point. Let's see what happens when we finish these socks. All right, we go to Shift 2 and we should, we should get some more story. You're pretty good at this. Huh? Where'd all these socks come from? Don't worry about it. It's a good job, right? Soothing. You can forget your troubles in a place like this. There's something comforting about repetition. Something ritualistic. Well, no rest for the wicked. Looks like your next batch is ready. Okay, so we're in shift two now. And we've got more socks and more variety of socks. Okay, so what is the Global Game Jam? The Global Game Jam is a challenge um, that takes place and you can compete from anywhere in the world. And you've got to try and make a complete game in one weekend. So you get to start on like Friday at 5 p.m. and you to finish at, by Sunday at 5 p.m. That's usually about time frame you're dealing with and it's surprisingly hard to get an, an entire game done in just 48 hours and what they do in the global game jam is they make it so that you have to um, do something according to a theme so that you can't just bring any game that you've already made before they'll give you a theme um, and you have to think of a game that relates to that theme okay well this is a bit weird Still got a sock left. How's the shift going? You need to finish pairing these socks. Why the hold up? Well, but I can't pair. There's only one sock. I've got nothing to pair it with. Management won't care about your excuses. Um. 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 Mm. Uh. Uh. Okay. Oh. Okay. Good job. So you can see we had a lot of fun with this. So why did we make a sock pairing game? I'll tell you after this. You're settling in, becoming part of the landscape. This job isn't as easy as it seems. Not everyone can hack it. It's the repetition. It gets to some people. We've had some problems with past employees. You're handling it though, right? You haven't been seeing things. Whew, good to hear. If you do experience anything distressing, anything at all, let me know. I'm here to help. 
trust me? So who is the mysterious voice on the phone? And should we trust them? Now you can see we've got these creepy little spider socks. And when we click on them, they scuttle away off to the edge of the screen and hopefully stop bothering us. So, what was the theme of the Global Game Jam in 2020? The theme was called Repair. So like, you repair something, you fix it. And uh, so, what we did was when we heard the theme, they show you this really cool video. You watch this video and we thought about the theme and myself and the person I was making the game with, which is uh, Kim Larking, my wife, um, we went off and we got dinner and we're like, how, what game should we make? How should we make a game that fits into repair? And so we had like uh, a lot of ideas and we were trying to think of the kind of game that we could make as well because um, we knew that um, I didn't really have the coding skill to do anything too complicated so we wanted something not too hard to program. And um, so then we made it, we said as a joke, um, oh, what about a, a game where you've got a pair of socks? You've just got to like, it's just a sock pairing simulator. Because you've got to repair the socks as a joke. And then we start, started talking about it, like, wouldn't it be kind of funny to actually make a sock pairing simulator? Like, that just sounds funny. And then we were like, okay, but then what would we do with that? And then we were like, but we could make it a horror game. We could make it so that um, actually, there's something very spooky going on here. So, yeah, that's why we decided to make a horror game that is also a sock pairing simulator. As you can see, a lot of these socks are very similar. Very easy to think that you've got a pair, but actually they don't. Um, they don't they're not actually exactly the same. Um, now, a lot of this is actually procedurally generated. Um, which means that sometimes some games can be harder than others because it chooses random socks from I think about I think there's like maybe 80 or 90 different types of socks and they are all of them gray and some of them are very very similar to each other Yep, yeah, you can see look this is just a different number of stripes here so those are very similar all right we'll get rid of this little spider one and then there we go we're on to shift four now. As you can see, it's a little bit like Five Nights at Freddy's as well. Different shifts. Management are happy with your progress and you're keeping up with your quotas. Lucky you. Oh? You want to meet me in person? I don't think that would be a good idea. You aren't ready yet. You have a lot of questions, don't you? Word of advice, keep your head down. Work hard and keep pairing socks. Management are happy. Let's keep it that way. We do not want to displease them. So we had a lot of fun um, writing all the dialogue. Oh, that's new. And you see we've got like a sort of a, a sort of a glitched out screen with like a static. And then afterwards, the socks all changed position. Oh, so close, but they're not the same. Um, the other thing that you've probably noticed is since last shift, all the socks slowly creep around, which is just kind of a little bit, a little bit unsettling. All right, let's get these paired. And obviously each level gets harder than the last. We did originally actually make some of the levels too hard and they were impossible to beat. So we had to like fix that. Um, we got a bunch of our friends to test it for us as well. And the overall gameplay mechanic is actually kind of relaxing. Oh, another one of these? Yep, there's another one of those. The static flashes are actually really annoying because sometimes you see the pair that you want to match up and then it's gone because they move around. So one of the reasons that I wanted to show you this is because the Global Game Jam is actually on this weekend. At least that is in Australia. It might be on slightly different time frames depending uh, which country you're in. Um, so I'm really looking forward to trying to make a game for this game jam. I have tried 
and you don't always succeed. A lot of the time, a lot of people who enter a game jam don't complete their game, because it's a very hard thing to complete a, an entire game um, within only 48 hours, just Friday to Sunday. So one of the reasons I think this worked so well was because it was such a simple concept. We, it was kind of a joke idea, like a troll game almost. Um, and yet, once we'd made it, we were like, oh, it's actually kind of fun, kind of like simple but fun. So let's make a kind of interesting story around it. Speaking of which, we're up to shift five. This is the second last level. The work is coming along nicely. Looks like everything is on track. How long have you been here? You don't remember. It's the job. It messes with your sense of time. Each day feels the same. It's easy to wonder what it's all for. I know this job seems like drudge work, but just keep going. You're special. Your work is important. We are on the cusp of something incredible. Ascension is nigh. Very ominous just seems even more untrustworthy, whoever this person is. Oh, now it's getting really hard. A lot of these are really similar. Kim, who did all the graphics, was definitely very evil by making all these socks so, so similar. Look at that. Can you hear me? What was that? This is getting very tricky now. You have to listen. So someone is sending us some kind of message, maybe. So the strategy that I tend to use, oh, they are using you. Are they? The strategy that I tend to use, I just tend to put socks into the sockets so that I have at least something in there and then I can try and look for the one that matches, because if you leave them out here, they move around a lot. And so sometimes you see the ones you want to grab, but then they're gone when you go back to get the one that matches them. Oh, there we go. And towards the end, it always gets easier because there's less socks to see, less socks to get confused by. Do not trust them. Ooh. Oh, close, but not the same. Oh, there we go, that fits. These two should work. The other nice thing... Wait, this is not what this seems. Hmm, interesting. The other nice thing about making a game like this is that um, the game takes a little while to complete. Um, and yet we didn't have to design, like, uh, completely our own levels because a lot of the random generation uh, creates a lot of the gameplay for us. So that's kind of like, I don't know, I found that easier to create parasites. Found that easier to, to, to make a game that sort of felt like it had a whole story. And you could make a lot of the gameplay without having to spend a lot of time designing levels manually myself. I probably won't go through the code for this, but I'll put a link in the description of the YouTube video if you want to go through the code and see, um, or even if you want to play the game. They are feeding off of you. The question is, do we trust whoever that voice is or do we trust whoever is calling us on the phone? All right, now we're on the home straight. Okay, the last pair, and this shift 666 is our last level before the end. Spoiler. Hey, you don't look so well. Who have you been talking to? You'd tell me if anyone was interfering with your work, right? Yeah? Good. We're so close. We've almost broken through. It's vitally important that you keep going. Oh, of course you can leave once you're finished. 
we had a lot of fun making the graphics. I say we, Kimberly made all of the graphics. I just did the coding as you, um, and she in fact had to make all of the text boxes individually as their own graphics because at that point I didn't know how to code in a text generator. Oh, look what happened there. Our sockets are moving around. That's just yet another thing that's going to make our lives harder, isn't it? This is so many socks. We have to get out. Oh, but I just need to finish this level first. If you do end up playing this, this level is actually really quite hard. You may not realize this, but this level actually adds socks back in. So if you can't pair them fast enough, um, it just keeps creating more. Uh, so whatever you do, don't don't walk away and leave this level running. Otherwise, you'll just end up filling the entire game with socks. Although, of course, now that I've said that, that's just what everyone's going to do now, isn't it? Get rid of these spider ones. Uh... So yeah, I really recommend you give a game jam a go. No, no, yes, yes, you should give a game jam a go. Um, I really, really enjoyed it, and it was only after I had such a good time um, at the game jam that I went to that um, I decided to get a bit more serious about learning how Scratch works and spend more time kind of making my own games, my own projects in it. Um, before then, it was something that I did a lot less of. And there are so many things, as I've said before, that I learned from making this game. Now, some depending where you are in the world with the Global Game Jam, you might need to be over 16 or over 18 to participate. But remember that just because you can't officially participate doesn't mean that you can't still do the Game Jam. Yeah, the great thing about game jams is that you can make a game and you know that one way or another it'll be finished in two days. You might not finish the game, and a lot of people don't. That's perfectly acceptable to be expected. Oh, there we go. But it really makes you realise what's important. And the reason we were able to complete this game and give it a whole story and everything was because it was so simple. We knew we couldn't make anything complicated because we only had two days to make it in. By the way, I absolutely love this music. This is music that Kim made. And I just think it works so well. It's so creepy. And just suits the whole, the whole tone of the game. Ah, oh, see, that's just mean. These are so close. The other nice thing about game jams is because you're not trying to sell the game, you're not trying to make any money from it, and you're not really trying to do anything super serious, you can just do these really stupid, silly, fun ideas, like what happens if we try to make a sock pairing simulator? So you can kind of come up with some really funny ideas. And in fact, a lot of really good games that have been very successful were first um, made in a game jam as something small and simple. Um, and then they turned that into a full big game after they realized they actually really liked the idea of it. Experimentation can lead to like some really uh, cool possibilities. Okay, finally we're getting somewhere now starting to get close to the end. Oh, don't you move away from me. Now, sometimes this last level can glitch out, but usually you might be left with one sock at the end, and usually the game should still finish. That's it. Our work is complete. It's been a long journey. I know you've been scared. What you went through left your mind shattered. We had to put it back together again. But we needed a framework to allow you to visualize the defragmentation process. It had to be simple, something relaxing. 
and we knew the therapy would be hard for your mind to accept. On some level you would resist, and your mind was in pain. A few nightmares were inevitable. I told you before I was here to help you. You know, nothing is ever so broken that it is beyond repair. So there we go. Are you ready? Your family are waiting for you. Wake up. That's the end of the game. The idea is that you were in like a coma and some kind of experimental procedure was made to kind of wake you up out of your coma and repair your mind. And all of the uh, spooky stuff was happening was your brain just being in pain and resisting the process. So yeah, we brought it round to um, repair again, even though the original uh, whole purpose of the game was just to make a joke out of the idea of repairing socks together. So I know this isn't the usual content that I make, but I wanted to show you that a game can be made completely in just two days, and it can be made out of a really silly idea, and you can even use that to tell this kind of story that you want to tell. I hope that you're inspired by this to make any kind of game that you want. If you're interested in participating in the Global Game Jam, go to globalgamejam.org. It's not a competition, there are no winners, it's just purely for game developers to get together and all challenge themselves to finish a game in, a pre in an amount of time, and then everyone plays each other's games. And you can also find a bunch of really fascinating games that people have made on this website. So you can go through, you can find a location that's near you, and also if you're old enough to participate, then you can find other people who like making games. I'm working on the next Undertale tutorial, so keep a close eye out for that. And I've been making a list of all the things you've been asking for, so let me know um, what other types of uh, tutorials you'd like to see. Leave a comment. You can subscribe and ring the bell to see when the next episode is ready. Um, and aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.